Today we'll be replacing the timing bell, water pump, cam seals, and crank seals on a 2005 Toyota Sienna. And the Sienna has the 3MZ FE engine. It's a 3.3 liter motor. Mechanically, to change the timing bell, there's virtually no difference with the 1MZ FE except for the timing belt tensioner. You have a 22 millimeter bolt that secures the harmonic balancers. And this bolt is very, very difficult to torque off, even with the impact driver. So I purchased this Leslie high mass 22 millimeter impact socket so that using it in conjunction with the impact driver, I won't have any problems taking off the bolt. Now on the 3MZ FE engine, power steering belt is removed by loosening up this bracket over here. But you have to physically remove the bracket because behind the bracket, this is the timing belt tensioner. So this is the adjustment bolt, and that's the bracket bolt. <clears throat> the timing belt tensioner is right here. If you notice this adjustment lever for the power steering pump, you have to move this back and forth in order to get access to two 12 millimeter bolts that keeps the tensioner on the engine block. So now I'm relieving the tension on the power steering belt. So we have to loosen up the alternator pivot bolt over here. You have to loosen up this bolt that keeps the adjustment bolt from moving. And then the belt tension adjustment bolt over here Okay, that should be enough. There. This is shot. This is the power steering belt. You can see brakes and the grooves over here and the cracks. Install the balancer puller to it. It's like aluminum corrosion. There is corrosion. It rusts on an alignment pin. I want to move this wire harness away from the timing belt cover because uh, it eases removal of both the cover and the camshaft when I remove the cam seals. Put a bolt all the way in the back.
Okay, I'm rotating the engine to get the timing mark aligned. So I'm looking at the camshaft as a guide. The camshaft sprocket, you see, you'll see on one of the legs a little hole. And there's a notch on the top of the camshaft cover. Right about there. So on the crankshaft side, you'll see a little tiny dimple right here. That dimple lines up with this little bump right up here. And that's top dead center. It's just a hair off to the left. That looks about just about right. Yeah, that looks perfect up there. I have to loosen up the pivot bolt on the alternator so I could take this bracket off. So I could take this sucker out. <sighs> Almost. There's one. Got it. There. Now that the tensioner is off, we can remove the timing belt. From my past experience, even though a belt may look fine, if it starts to feel like a rubber band, like it flexes it around real easy, the belt is on its way out. It could snap at any moment. We attach this long handled strap wrench on the camp sprocket so that the sprocket won't move while we're applying torque onto the sprocket bolt. That bolt is normally on at 90 foot pounds. It's wet here and here. The cam seals are definitely shot. So you can see the leakage over here. So you got an oil puddle over here. And the leakage over here is going directly over the power steering pump, which gives the impression that your power steering pump is leaking, but it's not. And a number 10 hex socket to remove the tensioner pulley bracket. Now there's a washer right behind there. See this thing right here. Here's the new water pump. It's made by Ishin. So we have three nuts over here and three bolts on the right side.
Okay. We try to use this tool to pull the camshaft seal out. And the normal procedure is go in on an angle, dig in like this, find the leverage point on the engine block, and then pull out. Well, that, that didn't work. It just kept slipping out. So what we did was we used a screwdriver instead and jammed it inside here and then literally pried it out. But you got to make sure the tip is pointing up, not down, so that you don't mar the, the contact surfaces of the uh, camshaft. So we tried my seal removal tool, so that didn't work out too well. So now I'm going to use this paint can lid removal tool to see if that will work. And that did it. So the paint can tool grabbed the edge right here. Putting this rod through here and then finding a leverage point over here and then pulling out like this. Okay, so we'll apply some dielectric grease on all the seals. Use dielectric instead of regular petroleum based grease because petroleum based grease will make the rubber swell. you could use this two inch PVC pipe. And that's it for the crankshaft seal. This is my Toyota camshaft seal press tool and this applies uniform pressure on the seal to press it to seal in. Feel the seal bottoming out and the tension starts to increase. So that's it. It's bottomed out. Now we'll go to the back side. It's bottomed out. So I'm going to apply the final tension on the water pump nuts and bolts using a quarter inch drive because you won't run the risk of applying too much torque and potentially shearing bolt heads. So this pulley bolt has to get transferred to the new pulley along with this washer. If you don't have this washer, then the pulley will not rotate applying tension to the belt. Put a little dielectric grease in here. Right there. Okay, so this is a new belt. Belt direction is identified with the arrow. This is alignment mark for the right camshaft. This is the alignment mark for the left camshaft. So I start by putting the belt on the back camshaft. I use this clip over here so that this belt won't slip off. Being a little bit forward makes it easier to mount the belt on over here.
as long as these two camshafts, this point lines up with here, and that point lines up with the back plate, and there's no slack on the belt, and you got the alignment. This lower portion of the belt on. I turned the crankshaft clockwise, there's no more slack on the belt on the right side. There's enough slack on the left side to put the belt over the tensioner pulley. So there's tension on the right side. We got slack on the left side, which will be taken up when we mount the pulley tensioner. So we're at top dead center on the alignment mark. There's a blue mark here and a blue mark there. We're at top dead center on the right camshaft, the line, blue mark here and a blue mark here. This white line is just slightly off center, which is okay, because it's slightly off center in the rear as well. And in the rear, we're in perfect alignment as well. The tensioner pulley that came with this kit was for the 1MZFE, not the 3MZ. So the 3MZ has a different design. If you, could, if you see, this is more like straight. You can obviously tell the difference between this and this, which is no big deal. I could reuse this bracket. I'll just transfer the pulley from here to here, to this bracket. Okay, that's going to prevent the belt from slipping off from the bottom. See how the belt's staying on? Put it like right on the edge so we could get full compression. A lot of people don't want to be bothered, you just get a new uh, tensioner. So you apply initial tension and let it equalize the pressure, and then it gets easier to squeeze down. So you got to give it a second or so. So I think this grabbed the other side. If it doesn't get to the other side, when I relieve the tension, it's going to bend the pin. So I'll relieve the tension now and see what happens. Yeah, see, it caught the other side. Now I gotta push this down so I can tighten that sucker up. Now we can pull the grenade pin out.
The top cover goes on first because the bottom cover overlaps the top. Some dielectric grease in here. You shouldn't be able to twist it more than 45 degrees unless it's a new belt. Then you're going to make it tight because it stretches. So I'm going to tighten the pivot bolt and the adjustment locking bolt down here. Put some anti-seize on the side motor mount contact services so we won't seize up if any corrosion buildup occurs. Before putting in the coolant, make sure your petcock is closed. And we're done.